it just me or I feel like the last time we saw Sticky is the last time we're gonna see Sticky. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm back with another character breakdown, another character analysis, and this is on Sticky Web. But also, I wanna talk about the disappearance of Sticky, his character, the background story behind it, the potential future of his character on the show within the Proud Family universe, and everything going on with that situation. You know the funny thing? I was going to do this video, but over the last few character breakdowns or like Proud Family analysis videos I've done, it's always those few comments that's like, I miss Sticky, I miss Sticky, I miss Sticky. And I'm like, why? Because I got it like that. It's obvious to me that even though Sticky was one of those second tier characters, where he popped in here and there, he still added something to the show. His presence is definitely missed. And honestly, I can say that I miss his presence on the show. I miss what he added to the show as well. I'm from I can't stand. I can't stand you. <laughs> Before I really get into Sticky's character analysis and the future of his character on the show, I wanna give some backstory on why he disappeared. Disney wasn't really transparent with it, but most of us that know, know. So for the backstory, Sticky was voiced by child actor turned media personality now, if you know, Orlando Brown. And Orlando Brown was a big child actor. He was in many different TV shows. One of his most notable was That's So Raven and voicing Sticky. Cause you know it's my duty to please that Sticky. But mind you, this was 22 years ago when he voiced Sticky. So Orlando Brown was still a teenager at the time. Now they did the reboot over the last 22 years, over the last five years before the reboot even came out. Only time you really hear about Orlando Brown is if he's in the media doing something crazy, saying something crazy, or you see his mug shots. Yeah, Disney is not gonna come out and say, Orlando Brown is not a parent, blah, blah, blah. They just gonna do stuff behind the scenes. I guarantee you, every time the producers or the writers for the Proud Family saw Orlando Brown in the news, they was like, oh my God. Because they were planning this Proud Family reboot for years. They finally got everything together, the writers, the voice actors, they finally got everybody together to come back. But Sticky, Orlando Brown was the only one who was doing what he was doing. Down like that, okay? <laughs> so, along that development process, they had to find different things, take this out, put this in, add that character, you know, all type of things to go around Sticky's character. And that's why in the season premiere, you see Sticky leaving for Japan. Never do be seen again. You gotta ask yourselves, do you really think Disney would want to be associated with someone like Orlando Brown and all the different things. Y'all know Disney and Nickelodeon, they quick to cut people off, no matter how old you are or whatever. They quick to cut people off or disassociate themselves from the actors who go crazy or go wild or do outlandish things in the media. They don't want nothing to do with them. It don't matter if it's just a voice character. It don't matter if it's just his voice. They don't want nothing to do with it. So, with that came the disappearance of Sticky. Penny, I'm really gonna miss you guys. Oh. And my question is, do you think they should have brought Orlando Brown back? And this would have been his second chance because, you know, he's doing all kind of stuff in media. But do you think him having this role would have been like, wow, let me get my shit together. I'm back on Disney. I'm doing his voice character, you know, 20 years later. But people still loving it. Still getting paid for it. Do you think they should have gave him a second chance to redeem himself? Or do you think they should have just recasted his character, recasted his voice? Do you think Orlando Brown's voice was so iconic that nobody else could do Sticky but Orlando Brown? So you see why they didn't bring him back? Because you think about it, Michael's character, from the original, it was Phil Lamar, big popular voice actor back then. They recasted Michael's voice to be Magic Johnson's son, EJ Johnson, right? So if they can recast Michael's character, why couldn't they recast Sticky's character? Could somebody please make it make sense? What do y'all think? What do y'all stand with that? Should they have recasted Sticky? 
or should they have gave Orlando Brown a second chance? Now, going into Sticky's character, I felt like he added a great balance to the friend group. You know, they always displayed the girls as being over-emotional and this and that. Sticky would just be the one to come in, say his one, two liners, and give his input, and it would be like, hmm, okay. Why are we paying to be with people we don't like when we can be with people we do like for free? And another thing with Sticky, I said this in the Myron video, because you know how Myron was like the black nerd of the Prowl family? Sticky had a natural swag, even from the way he dressed. He didn't wear big glasses, bifocals. He had some nice blue shades. He had like a do-rag skull cap, you know, a nice little outfit. And he could have been known as a nerd because he was into gadgets and gadgets, all kinds of different things, right? But his natural swag, the way he presented himself, made him not one of the most popular kids, but he kind of did his own thing. He could mesh well with different groups, different personalities. Another thing with Sticky that I liked is they made him like tech savvy. It wasn't like the nerd, the one that gets bullied. He was a tech savvy one. He had that natural swag, but he was into his technology and the gadgets and always inventing something to help Penny out or to, you know, help whatever situation it was all going through. He always had these gadgets. Sometimes they work, sometimes they didn't. Goodbye, Sticky. And you know what's funny? I even found, look at Kiwi, I even found this old promo clip regarding Sticky. Meet Sticky Webb. Going back to the creek. Hipster, player, manicurist. Who you know? You know you need it. Just another one of the gang. The Proud Family. Weekends at 6, 5 Central on Disney Channel. It was interesting how they tried to promote his character. Even though it was a, mostly a group of girls, they tried to make it seem like Sticky was one of them. Like, you know, that guy friend with the group of girls. And here's another thing I want to hit on. Because I felt like Sticky was that type of guy friend that the girls felt comfortable around. They didn't have to worry about no ulterior motives with Sticky. Now, there were a few times we could tell Sticky had a little crush on Penny, but he only took it so far. And with that, I remember being in middle school and it was always a thing where if certain guys hung around like too many girls, it would be those guys that's like, oh, such and such hang out with too many girls. Such and such hang with too many girls. Or oh, certain guys would start looking at them funny because they hang out with too many girls. To me, it was always like, so? Who cares? You know, Sticky would hang out with the group of girls, but he would also hang out with guys. Sticky was just a well-rounded character. One of those well-rounded personalities. He almost also reminded me of myself where I can mesh with anybody. You know those personalities where you can one with anybody, you can talk with anybody, you can get along with anybody? Now the way other people act, that's on them. But he was just one of those characters I felt like could get along with anybody. Sorry about that, ladies. You ladies okay? Yeah, we're fine. And ultimately, when you think about it, I feel like Sticky was one of Penny's best friends. And he was, in some ways, her most reliable friend. Now, he did have that episode where he kind of rebelled and went with a group of bullies because his parents was going through a divorce, which is another thing I feel like they should have dug deeper into. Like, that divorce storyline with Sticky. There's all kinds of families, and they don't all have mothers and fathers. I guess I was just mad, okay? How about your parents' divorce? Yeah, I guess. Because here's the thing with the Proud family. I say this in almost every video. We know it's the Proud family. We know Penny is the main protagonist. 60 to 70% of the storylines are going to be about Penny, right? But remember we had shows like Hey Arnold or Arthur, right? Arnold and Arthur were the main characters, but they also did side episodes, entire episodes or B-plots about different characters like with Arthur, Muffy, Francine, Binky, Sue Ellen, Arnold, Gerald, Helga, you know, Rhonda, Phoebe, they also gave the side characters their own episodes too, just to give the show some spice, just to give the show some variety. Every episode doesn't have to be about Penny or, you know, her and BB and CC or her and Trudy or what Penny's going through. We can see other storylines. Can you come up with something else? Can you come up with something else? Because have they ever showed Sticky's parents? Or where Sticky live? Have they ever showed that? And from that episode, you could tell that Sticky wanted to feel like he belonged somewhere. He wanted to feel needed. Because, you know, that group of bullies, the Altos, they were incompetent without him. He was the brains behind that 
bully group, right? He was the brains behind that whole entire operation of them trying to steal different things. Without him, they were useless. Did you get the secret location for the scavenger hunt from that fool? Yeah, I got him. Mr. Prout, they cheated. <gasps> Sticky, what are you talking about? How do you know this? Because I helped him. Being well-rounded, being level-headed, he realized what he was doing was wrong, and he fixed it. That's the thing with Sticky. He could fall under peer pressure, but at the end of the day, he knew right was right, and he always did what was right. Speaking of the screen time Sticky would get, I felt like at least 45% of it was dedicated to him getting harassed by DJ Nate. Now come here. I'm going to show you what kissing is all about. <laughs> Sticky. I know the pain you're in, baby. Let me ease it for you. Why don't you ease up off? As I talked about in her video, that was one of the major gags in the show. Dijanae being obsessed with Sticky and annoying him and him running away from her. That was a major gag in the show. But y'all remember that episode where Dijanae ended up going with Duke? You know, like that light-skinned guy that had the dreadlocks. That was like the Hawaii, whoa, whoa, dude. Er, the surfer dude, right? All of a sudden, Sticky got jealous. Like, all this time, DJ Nate was chasing you and harassing you. You didn't want nothing to do with her. You was running away from her. The minute she goes with another guy, now you're jealous. And it's kind of like, are you jealous or are you upset that you're not getting that attention that nobody else gave you? Because that's another thing people talked about with Sticky's character. And it came up a lot. Especially when I did the color visit video a few months ago, where people was like, oh, why they got Dijanae going after Sticky? He's not even that attractive. And it's like, wow, like they made Dijanae look so desperate. This is what people said in my comments. People were saying that they made Dijanae look so desperate going after Sticky, who was conventionally unattractive. And I'm like, wow. So some people consider even Sticky to be conventionally unattractive. But I'm like, is it because of his height? Or what? You know, like, you know what they did with Myron. But even with Sticky, some consider him to be conventionally unattractive, like his design. And I'm like, interesting. What do you think about that? If you really think about it, they never gave Sticky his own love interest. They never gave Sticky his own episode where he was dating a girl or you know that classic trope cliche episode where the girl would just be using Sticky for something even though she didn't really like him, they never even gave him one of those. Like, where was Sticky's love interest? Why do you think they never really gave him one? But Dijanae being obsessed with him. I guess Kiwi looking for Sticky too. What do y'all think is gonna be the future of Sticky's character? Are they gonna never mention him again, never show him again? Or do you think he might pop up in season three? They gonna give him a new voice actor? Orlando Brown gonna get his shit together and they gonna give him a second chance. What do you think is gonna happen with Sticky's character? Kiwi. That's not Sticky. <laughs> now, you done pissed me off. Because when you really think about it, they boosted Michael's role in the show. And he took over as the main guy in the friend group. Each criticism though, is that they made Michael extra flamboyant in his reboot, especially when you compare it to Sticky's cool nature from the original series. And that was a big problem for some people. What do y'all think about that? What would y'all like to see for Sticky's character in season three? Do you want them to bring him back? Did you not really care about his character like that? Like, what do y'all think about the disappearance of Sticky Web? Please let me know down below. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.